As a savvy accounting and finance professional, you know that the three-way match is the holy grail of accuracy when it comes to processing invoices for payment. But there are so many little places that errors can slip in. Errors that lead an organization to pay more than it should, or even worse, paying for something that it shouldn't. These extra or erroneous payments come right off your bottom line, making your organization less profitable and hence less competitive than it could be. Make sure you stick around until the end when we discuss the common error that many overlook. Hey guys, I'm Mary Schaefer, founder of AP Now, your one-stop shop for cutting business intelligence if you work in, manage, or have responsibility for the accounts payable or payment function. Now, the three-way match, sometimes called purchase order matching, is the fundamental process for verifying that your invoices are accurate by matching the purchase order with the receiving document and the invoice. It is typically handled in accounts payable and is the first step towards protecting your organization from paying for something that it did not receive or paying for something twice and, of course, paying a fraudulent invoice. This verification is bigger and more complex than many realize. We're going to go through the process now, focusing on the documents and the places, the common places that errors are made. So let's start off with the purchase order, which, as you know, is the document that starts the transaction. It is a commercial document issued by the buyer, uh, placing an order with the seller. It indicates what is being ordered, the amounts, and agreed upon prices and other terms and conditions. These are often negotiated in advance and will typically cover multiple purchase orders unless it's a special, which we'll talk more about in a little bit. Once accepted, the transaction is set in motion. Now, um, a little tip, if you will, make sure that the purchase order is filled out completely. This is typically not a big deal in the days of electronic uh, purchase orders. Okay, so what's the big purchase order mistake? You need to remember if your purchasing folks make a special deal that they adjust the purchase order. They don't just tick that standard terms and conditions. Sometimes if it is not about the price, it might be, let's say, about the payment terms that um, are not reflected on the purchase order unless somebody makes a special effort to change the standard terms and conditions. Oftentimes when this happens, the purchasing team does not no make a note of it on the purchase order and just hopes or trusts that the supplier will make note of it when it of the longer payment terms when they issue the invoice. But guess what? They often forget. And when this happens, there is absolutely no way that accounts payable can know about the extended payment terms because purchasing didn't tell them. It's not on the invoice. It's not on the purchase order. So there's no way that they know, and they end up paying uses, using the standard payment terms, and this savings that purchasing worked so hard to negotiate goes up in spurt. Special alert. Anyone who arranges a special deal at the end of the fiscal year needs to be especially aware of this, because this is typically when this happens, although it's not the only time, and it is often overlooked. Um, this is especially prevalent in the pharmaceutical industry for, in one case. And when I tell you that it is often overlooked, I will tell you that in some instances, companies have overlooked 100% of those savings. Okay, I'm going to stop carrying on about that. And I'm going to move on to talking about receiving documents. Um, receiving documents are sometimes called packing slips. Um, and typically they're included in the shipment and delineates all the items included in the shipment. You get this when you order yourself. So for example, in uh, if you order from Amazon, you get that little slip of paper and it tells you what's in there. All it says is what's included. It's nothing about price, terms, and conditions. Now, the receiving document mistake, if you will. Um, first of all, the receiving document needs to be verified and verified closely when the goods are received. Um, oftentimes it is not. The goods are just simply signed for and it is assumed that the shipment is correct and matches what's on the packing slip. So if the packing slip says um, 100 widgets, you need somebody to verify that there are 100 wid widgets. If the packing slip says blue widgets, you need somebody to make sure that they're all blue widgets. Are they damaged? If so, how and where should be noted. You get the idea. But too often what happens is the goods are marked and in at the receiving docks and no one does this in-depth check at that point. And if no one checks closely, then there is no way to catch a short payment or a short shipment or a defective shipment later on. Now, 
Before we get to the last document and the mistakes that uh, can cause havoc, I'd like to share with you that the AP Nail Channel has over 400 videos tackling topics, all sorts of topics impacting the accounts payable and payment issues. And we release new ones on Tuesdays and Thursdays with shorts occasionally in between. And occasionally on Saturday, we have a Wordle video. So please check it out after you finish watching this one. Okay, let's turn our attention now to invoices, which, by the way, is the document that most believe caused most of the problems with the three-way invoice uh, with the three-way match. The invoice or the bill, if you will, is the document sent by the seller to the buyer, basically requesting payment. If it doesn't match what's on the purchase order and what was received, i.e., what was on the packing slip or receiving document, it is considered a discrepant invoice and must be reconciled, okay? And this happens often. Um, and so it is very important that you don't take the approach, we get an invoice, we pay an invoice, what's the big deal? Okay. Um, the problem begins when this reconciliation is done, not done in a timely manner and the invoice isn't paid on time, and then the supplier... In, and they're totally 100% right to do this, sends a second invoice when the payment date passes um, and they're looking for payment. And this often compounds the problems associated with it. So now let's talk about some invoice problems. And there are many. So we're only going to talk about a few because you don't want to hear me go on and on all day here. So we're going to just talk about the a few of the bigger ones that you need to be on guard for. Okay, invoice mistake number one. Um, not making sure your suppliers know where to send invoices, making it um, that they just put a general address on, the invoice floats around, and of course, you get it late, and then you can't get it paid on time. You would be surprised just how often this happens. So you want to make sure your, your suppliers know exactly where to send the invoice, be it a mailing address or an email address, and you want them to do it precisely. Invoice mistake number two, not reconciling these discrepant invoices in a timely manner. I know it's much easier to put the invoice aside that are that are discrepant and go back and, and you know, start processing ones that do match. And then, you know, I'll deal with these discrepancies later. But you know how that happens. It gets put aside and then it doesn't get worked on for a day, two days, a week, two weeks. And then before you know it, it's past due. So reconcile your discrepant invoices in a timely manner. And now for the big issue that can be solved by simply talking to your suppliers, okay? Talk to them. And a lot of this problem will go away. Not all of it, but a lot of it. Actively encourage your vendors to send only one copy of the invoice. For when they send multiple copies of the invoice, your chance of making a duplicate payment in increases and you just have to waste time processing that invoice, figuring out it's a duplicate and weeding it out. So encourage all your vendors to send only one copy of the invoice. And this might even mean picking up the phone and calling them. Now, some of them will have a practice of, um, you know, sending multiple copies and you're not going to be able to stop them, but you want to stop them as much as can, you can. Now, the three-way match is just the first step in the bot battle to stop duplicate payments, which happen with greater frequency than you might imagine. And they are often not returned. Yes, that's right. Many times when a supplier gets a duplicate payment, they are not returned. And this happens more frequently than you might imagine. By eliminating most, but eliminating most duplicate payments can be fairly easy if you know how to do it and it doesn't have to cost you a red cent. We recently did a short video on the issues, on those issues, which you can watch right now using the link that will appear momentarily on your YouTube screen and is in the description below. As always, we appreciate your thumbs up. They help us grow as the more thumbs up and comments we get on our videos, the more YouTube shares this recording with others who might like it. So a big thank you from me personally to everyone who takes the time to click the thumbs up button.